Hello, welcome to NCV Level 4, subject carpentry and roof work. Our topic today is ceiling installation. I am Mr. V. N. Zumba. Our lesson objectives the first one is definition of a ceiling. Number two, describe the advantages of a ceiling. Number three, types of ceiling. Number four, scaffolding. Number five, setting out a ceiling. Number six, spacing the brand rings of a ceiling. Number seven, leveling the brand rings of a ceiling. Number eight, receiving and storing of ceiling boards. Number nine, the tongue and groove timber ceiling. Now let's go on to look at uh, the first objective, which is uh, the definition of a ceiling. Definition of a ceiling. A ceiling is a horizontal surface that forms the top part or roof inside a room. The upper interior surface of a room or a similar compartment. It is also described as a ceiling is an overhead interior surface that covers the upper limit of a room. It is not generally considered a structural element, but a finished surface concealing the underside of a roof structure or the floor of a story building above. Second objective, describing the advantages of a ceiling. There are several reasons why we install ceilings and the benefits of having a ceiling. Advantages of a ceiling. The first one is aesthetic value. A ceiling can hide the inside of a roof from those who occupy the building. Ceilings help to improve the appearance of a room and also ceilings also aid the value of the building. So this is the first one, aesthetic value. The second one, thermal comfort. Ceiling help to limit temperature changes. They can be more effective if the carpenter put insulation on them. The third advantage is strength. Most ceilings are not designed to add strength to the structure of a building. Sometimes strong winds could cause movement of the walls. This movement would be reduced if the ceiling was in place, adding strength to the structure. So the ceiling, those branderings, they help to hold the roof if there is any shaking from the rough winds or rough weather. The fourth advantage is sound insulation. Ceiling reduces the transfer of noise, sound, e.g. loud music, private conversations from the next room. So most of the times a house which has got a ceiling is able to withhold sound in that same room as compared to a house which does not have a ceiling. And also the noise from corrugated iron sheets if the roof is uh, with sheet metal, it can be concealed if there is a ceiling. The fifth advantage of a ceiling, dust insulation. Dust that is blown under the roof from outside is prevented by the ceiling from settling in the roof. So the ceiling helps to, to prevent dust going into the room. It will be kept there in the roof without penetrating your private room. Another advantage, fireproof. Ceilings that are made from fireproof material help to prevent the spread of fire. It is recommended to use a class A ceiling tile such as uh, calcium silicate or AFM thermophone to ensure a good quality fire resistant ceiling. So we find all these types of uh, fireproof ceiling in um, banks, in offices, 
or in any structures where a fire might break through. Then we have got two types of ceiling boards which are used to cover at our level four. Uh, there are several types of ceilings that are currently used, but at this level we are focusing on two, which is the gypsum ceiling board and the tongue and groove ceiling board. Scaffolding. This is a device used by construction people to reach heights which are difficult to reach. The use of ladders during installation of ceiling may be hazardous and difficult. So we can see here we have got two types of scaffolding. The first one is the independent scaffolding. This is the independent scaffolding. And then the second one is the trestle scaffolding. Sometimes you will find an independent scaffolding, it comes with wheels. So you don't have to get down when you move to a different position. Someone, your assistant, will just slide it through to the next position. Materials used to install ceilings. Ceiling board is fixed to the brandering using three inch wire nails. Main focus is on two types of uh, ceilings, uh, the gypsum ceiling and the tongue and groove. So to install these uh, brandarings to the tie beams, you require these three inch wire nails. Then when you are fixing the ceiling board to the brandering, you require the clout nail. The clout nail is 38 millimeters. It's not that long, it's very short. Then the cornice is fixed or is glued to the ceiling board using this type of glue, silicone. Then we go on to setting out. Install the datum above three, 300 millimeters down from the bottom cord. It is very important that the datum line is perfectly leveled and all around the room. The datum line is used to continuously check the ceiling if it's level during the installation. The brandering runs at 90 degrees to the bottom cords. The spacing of the brandering on the two walls parallel to the length of the bottom cords. When ceiling board is fitted, the brandering has to be 450 millimeters apart. Use 38 by 38 brandering and fix them with 75 millimeter wire nails. It is the same as three inch wire nails. Spacing of the brandering. There is a diagram showing the spacing when you are setting out. How do you space the marking? Uh, showing the spacing of the brandering. So there are some marks which are left, which are marked on the wall, opposite walls. Then the bottom cords will run across those uh, marked lines. There is the datum level, the point of reference. Then the spacings of 450 to the next brandering. Installation of brandering. Installation of brandarings. These are the timber members fixed to the bottom cord of a truss to support the ceiling. The pictures below show how the brandarings are spaced and fixed to the bottom cord. As you can see, this is a picture of a classroom and they are fully fitting the ceiling. The brandarings are these 30 by 30 brandering at the bottom of the tie beam. And even in the next picture, we see the metal brandarings. This is the modern type of ceiling installation. They use aluminium brandarings.
Then there are two types of uh, w type of ways to install the branda rings. The first one is uh, longitudinal branda rings. This is the most common kind that is in, installed in most residential homes. Longitudinal branda rings runs at 90 degree angle to the trusses. It's, it's used to level the ceiling the ceiling boards that are attached to it. So if you see, there's another, that picture again, showing the longitudinal branda rings. They are just fitted, running along, leaving a gap of 450 between. Double buttons. The length of the ceiling determines where the double branda ring will be installed. The edge of the ceiling board tends to be friable so double, double branda rings will help to nail. So in the, in the diagram, we can see the tie beam, that's the bottom cord, and the gypsum ceiling board, then the, drum, the double branda ring. It is only put where two ceiling boards will meet. That's where you put double branda rings. Setting out for lightweight roofs. A roof that is cement tiled is trusses that are 760 millimeters apart. For the sheet metal roof, the trusses can be 1.2 millimeters apart. So the carpenter uses the brandering that is 30 by 50 millimeters, which resists sagging between the trusses. Brandering is fitted at 100 millimeter with 100 millimeter nails and still use 450 millimeters between them. Uh, this is a method shown here how to fix the brandering to the tie beam. And there is the brandering and the nail. But if the brandering is 30 by 50, you use 4 inch nails or 100 millimeter wire nails. If the brandering is 30 by 30, you use the 75 millimeter or 3 inch nails. And there is a marking showing the spacing, the spacing mark. There is a second way of fixing the brandering is cross brandering. Cross branding runs at 90 degrees to the longitudinal branding. If you look in the diagram, there are some longitudinal diagram branderings, and the cross branding are going across the longitudinal branderings. This means that the cross branding creates squares that are 300 millimeters by 300 millimeters. Cross branding is cut in and skewed nailed between the longitudinal branda rings and the cross branda rings. So when you fix the ceiling board, there are less chances of the ceiling board sagging because it will be held also by the cross branda rings other than the longitudinal branda rings alone. When you are fixing the ceiling, uh, sometimes you begin to see that it is not leveled. So there is need before you put the ceiling board to check if your branda rings are well leveled. So leveling the buttons, uh, when you are leveling the buttons, the branda rings require, you require a, a hammer, some packing materials, and a nylon line. So if you look in the diagram, there is the branda ring, and these ones are the bottom cords, and there is the packings. The packings are put so that the branda ring will not follow where the tie beam is. It will be kept at the same level with the nylon line or with the datum line. So to keep it in that level, you put a packings or wedges. These packings or wedges are made of masonite or 
plywood material. Age of the ceiling. The age of the ceiling board where it meets the wall is attached to the perimeter frame. This edge is covered by a cornice which is a cosmetic device that covers the space or the place where the ceiling meets the wall. So where the ceiling meets the wall, there might be a gap and that gap needs to be closed using the cornice. And the cornice, they come in different designs and they help to improve the appearance of the ceiling. Handling and preparing cornices. Cornice can easily be damaged, so it should be handled with care to avoid damage. If the room you are installing the ceiling is rectangular, use a mitre box to cut 45 degree angles. Make sure the joint is perfectly tight, closed, when, na when nailing the two ends of the cornice to the brandering. Use a nail gun if possible or a cordless screwdriver to hold the cornice in position before the glue sets. Make sure a free hand cut if the corner is not perfect. Use a panel saw to cut the corners, but this is done by an experienced carpenter. Otherwise, the joint will keep on opening. You need a lot of experience to cut this corner. Receiving and storing the ceiling board. Uh, there's a special way of handling these ceiling boards or carrying these ceiling boards to the storeroom and storing them and also retrieving them from the storage to the workplace. So the gypsum ceiling board is flexible but not strong. After receiving them, the carpenter must inspect them. You inspect for dents, dirt, uh, broken or any other blemishes that might come with the ceiling. The, the board must be supported on a sacrificial board. The sacrificial board is the board that you put at the bottom of all the boards so that all the dirt that comes to the ceiling board will be protected by that sacrificial board. So the sacrificial board will protect the other boards from dust, dirt, and uneven surfaces. During transportation, the boards must be laid on pellets or frames, which are 450 millimeters apart or less. If it's more than 450, it might start to sag and maybe break. The floor of, of the storage room must be clean dry and flat surfaced until they are collected from, for fitting. If the storage room has got moisture, these uh, gypsum ceiling board have got a tendency of absorbing moisture and it will get damaged. Fitting the ceiling board. Boards must be carefully fitted onto the scaffold by hand and your hands must be clean and free of dirt and grease. Install each board at 90 degree angle to the brandering and when two ceiling boards meet, install double brandering. Use 38 millimeter cloud nails to fasten the board to the brandering at 150 millimeter apart at the center of the brandering. Use the edge section cover strip or molded timber to hide the gaps between the boards. So where two ceiling boards meet, you can use an edge section to hold them together or you nail them to the, to the brandering and then you put a cover strip to hide the joint. 
the edge section steel cover slides over the edges of each board and the molded timber can be nailed to the brandaren. These are the diagrams of the edge section, cover strip, and the molded timber. The molded timber is made out of uh, pine and it can be half round as it is here or a different design of a mold. But the edge section aluminium cover is just an, an aluminium uh, which is edge in section of view and the ceiling board will fit in these openings on the side. Tongue and groove ceilings. Tongue and groove ceilings are more commonly known as knotty pine ceilings. They are made of SA pine. Some people prefer Mirandi, although it's expensive. So these tongue and grooves, sometimes you will find them made out of Mirandi, but the price of each lens is more exorbitant. It is named tongue and groove because of the way the timber planks slot into each other. Not all ceilings need brandering. Tongue and groove can be fixed directly to the bottom cord if they are perfectly leveled. This is made possible because the timber ceiling boards are strong and can span without sagging between the bottom cords, not more than 1050 millimeters. Setting out of tongue and groove. Check if the two opposite walls are parallel to each other. If they are out of parallel, by more than 15 millimeters, the carpenter must consult the architect. The joint on the cornice must always appear to be parallel, even if the adjustments are made. Starting. When you are starting the ceiling, decide which side of the room which you want to start. Closely fix a nail to the first bottom cord about 10 millimeters away from the wall. Do the same to the other end of the room and the string line between the two nails. Fix nails closely into each other to the bottom cords roughly one millimeter away from the line. There should now be a straight line row of nails parallel with the wall and 10 millimeters away. This is the diagram that is describing what we are talking about. You put one nail, the first one here, and then you put the last one there. And all these other nails will be in the same line with the nylon line. And these are the tie beams. And you are about to install the brandarings. The tie beams or the bottom cord. The first member must be flat, straight and free of defects. Open one bundle of timber at a time to avoid damage and distortion by warping. Square off the member on both ends using a mitre saw or a mitre box. Do not use members which are warped and cracked because they will develop into a bigger costly problem later. Start with the grooved end against the wall. There is the diagram describing this. When you start, you start with this one, then you put the next one, then you put the next one. These are the tongue and groove timber ceiling boards and the nylon line is still there to direct you if it's level or not. Secret nailing a member to the bottom cord using an overall nail. Use a pneumatic brand nailer to speed it up. So when you are doing secret nailing you use the overall nails because they don't show their head on the surface and they are, not, they are easy to drive under the surface of the wood. The next point, fitting the next row. When you have fitted the first row, now you want to put the next row. 
On the diagram, you can see this is the next row, this timber. You slot it into the tongue here, but it has to go around. You can't just put it directly to break the tongue. So before you feed the next row, it is essential that you check the member first to make sure that there are no broken pieces stuck in the groove. The usual method of fixing one member into the next is by holding the tongue and groove to the next member at a 135 degree angle to the groove in the fixed member and rotate, rotate it into the flat of 180 degrees position while keeping pressure on the, on the member so that the groove slips into the tongue and groove. The carpenter must have an instant in order for him to get it right. Use of an of off-cut piece of a tongue and groove 300 millimeter long to make sure the tongue fits properly into the groove. So you drive the tongue and groove piece with this off-cut to make sure it goes into the groove tightly. The difference between member members should not exceed 5 millimeters. The difference normally comes when someone assisting you to apply more pressure relaxes during the process. So if you relax some tongue and groove, they normally pull out. So you must always pay attention. The last member. The last member may be ribbed with a saw or a mobile table saw for it to fit in the smaller gap left to reach the wall. There's the diagram which is describing the last member. There's a small small tongue and groove which is ribbed. Then it is forced using that rotating position to go into the groove. Then you nail it to the bottom cord. There are a few study questions which I have listed here. The first one, name two types of ceilings that are basically used in most residential buildings. Number two, what are the two methods of in installing branding during the ceiling installation? The third one, which two types of equipment allow the carpenter to reach the height of the ceiling position? And the fourth one, name the ornamental fitting used to cover the gap between the ceiling board and the wall. Thank you and stay safe.